All right, so this is a quick video on latent heat um, and the kinetic particle model of matter. So the idea of what latent heat is, is we've got a really important definition here that you really want to have in your book if you don't already, which is latent heat is the heat added to a substance undergoing a change of state that does not increase the temperature. And the reason for, for this particular um, phenomenon is the fact that inside a uh, substance, remember we talked about internal energy and we had different types of energy, but when we talk about temperature, temperature is only related to kinetic energy. So, and it was related to, remember, the average kinetic energy. And it was, in particular, translational. Now, when we have a change in state, some of the energy is used in potential energy and either increasing or going into potential energy within uh, that substance. So it goes into, remember, that vibrational um, energy, rotational, that spinning, um, bending, flexing, stretching, all of those things so that you can have particles that can either escape the bonds of being in a, a solid and then go into a liquid or going from a liquid into a gas or vice versa if, if we need to um, have energy going back into, um, into those attractions between the particles. So at those points where we change state, that's where we have energy that's sort of disappearing effectively but not changing temperature and that's because it doesn't um, go to actually moving the particles around. So if you're still not sure about that, a fantastic part to read is probably this section here. Because this really tells you about what's happening at that change of state. So you could pause the video and have a read of that. I just wanted to go on to quickly talking about the two types of specific latent heat we're interested in. Specific latent heat of fusion, which is the quantity of energy required to change one kilo of a substance from solid to liquid without the change in temperature. And then we similarly have the specific latent heat of vaporization, which is the same idea, but it's changing one kilogram of a substance from a liquid to a gas. So again, the, the definitions you probably want to have in your book is these two here. And you can see in this diagram where we have um, a changing of state. So you've got temperature increasing for a solid, the melting, which is where we have the latent heat of fusion. Then we've got increasing again, liquid evaporation, latent heat of vaporization, and then into a gas and back the other way. And there's a really neat little diagram here. You can see this is uh, for water, the heating curve of water. And you can see here that the temperature is increasing across this time from A to B. So this is as the water's heating up from a solid. And then you can see at this point of the graph, nothing is going on. So this is the point here where you've got, I should say from liquid, not solid, where you've got the water evaporating. So this is the latent heat here and this would be the latent heat of vaporization. You're not increasing temperature at all but you are changing state for that fluid so it then becomes a gas and then after we've got past that point we have the gas or the water vapor now increasing in temperature again. So this flat part is the part where we have energy going in and out of the system um, but it's not contributing to temperature so it's not contributing to the average kinetic um, translational energy. Now you can see in this table, table 1.4, we've got some different specific latent heats of fusion and of vaporization for different substances. And just to think about what this means, we've actually got a nice rule here, which tells us the quantity of energy required to change the state of a substance without a change in temperature, which is Q equals M times L. Sounds scary, but really M is just the mass of a substance. It should be in kilos, okay, because your... Um, latent heats of fusion and vaporization are in joules per kilo. If you're not familiar with what the little negative one means up there, it's a index. It means that per kilo, joules per kilo. And the latent heat of fusion or vaporization is from the table. So as an example, pretend that we had two kilos of water. If we were interested in Q, which is the quantity of energy required to change state, let's say um, between um, being a uh, water and a gas, so let's say the vaporization, we'd have Q equals M times L, and here M would be two kilos of water, so I've just, I've just made up a question for us to use, and L would be out of the table, so it would be the specific latent heat of vaporization, so 2.3 by 10 to the power of 6. Remember we're using um, scientific notation here, so just keep it compact like that. Now the other thing that we should do is we should put our units in. So I'm actually going to pop my units in in a different colour so you can see. So we would have kilos 
and over here we'd have joules per kilo. Now the cool thing is because this is joules per kilo, it's actually the same as joules per kilo, like that. So what's going to happen when you multiply these two quantities together, the mass and the, um, the latent heat, is that the kilos actually cancel out. So all you have left is the numbers, so 2 times 2.3, which would be 4.6 by 10 to the 6, and the only units left there are joules. And that makes sense because it's an energy. Q is a, a quantity of energy. So that's how we can calculate specific uh, energy required for specific latent heat and vaporization or fusion. Um, and really the, the key definition that you want to know is what latent heat, what latent heat is um, and to understand the fact that temperature does not change when a substance is changing state.